Now, as promised, the news in detail. Let's begin with the UK, which has said it considers the US its closest ally, but does not agree with its stance on Iran. Britain's Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt said a small window is still open to keep the 2015 nuclear deal alive. The EU's Foreign Affairs Council met in Brussels to discuss ways to de-escalate tensions in the Gulf. The meeting seeks to convince Iran and the U.S. to initiate dialogue amid fears of a collapse of the JCPOA. The French Foreign Minister pressed Tehran to reverse its decision not to comply with parts of the accord. We consider them our closest ally. We believe the alliance between the UK and the US has been the foundation of global peace and prosperity over the last 75 years. But friends sometimes disagree. And when we do so, uh, we do so openly. This is one of the very rare occasions when we do disagree. But that doesn't mean we don't work very closely with them uh, in the pursuit of peace. Speaking at the conference, Hunt said Europe had to remain united in its efforts to save the nuclear pact. Now, the U.S. has described Iran's offer to hold talks as a trap similar to the one that led to the 2015 nuclear deal. In an interview, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said Washington will not accept terms that President Donald Trump believes are disastrous. This comes after President Hassan Rouhani said Iran is ready to hold negotiations on the pact if the U.S. withdraws unilateral sanctions. Washington has granted a visa to Iranian Foreign Minister Javad Zarif so he can attend a U.N. meeting this week. This comes after the State Department reversed its decision to impose diplomatic and financial curbs on Tehran's top diplomat. Well, the European Union's Foreign Affairs Council will meet later today to discuss ways to reduce tensions in the Gulf. Iraq's stability is another topic up for discussions at the Brussels meeting. In a joint statement issued ahead of the conference, Britain, France and Germany repeated their support for the 2015 nuclear deal with Iran. It says European signatories of the pact will encourage Iran to keep to its pledges. Signatories say they are deeply troubled by recent confrontations in the Gulf and deteriorating U.S.-Iran relations. The 2015 agreement to limit Iran's nuclear activities in return for reduced economic sanctions has floundered since the U.S. withdrew last year. Let's get to some other news now. China has said it will not do business with U.S. firms involved in selling arms to Taiwan under a recent $2.2 billion deal. Foreign Ministry spokesman Gang Shuang said no one will be allowed to intervene in China's internal affairs. This comes a day after Chinese military carried out air and naval drills along its southeast coast. The coast is one of the country's most sensitive regions as it faces Taiwan across the narrow strait. Earlier, Beijing threatened the companies with sanctions if they sell military equipment to Taipei. China considers the island a renegade province. In Moscow, meanwhile, 38 protesters have been arrested following demonstrations against a ban on opposition candidates in forthcoming local elections. Demonstrators rejected the Election Commission's decision to disqualify candidates opposed to President Vladimir Putin's government. Ilya Yashin, a critic of Putin, called a meeting with voters, which turned into a protest rally. Demonstrators marched to the Election Commission headquarters where they chanted anti-government slogans. Yashin is among those arrested by police. The Election Commission has yet to announce the final list of candidates who will contest the September 8th polls for Moscow's 45-seat assembly. Well, Turkey says President Trump has the authority to waive any sanctions the U.S. could apply after Ankara's purchase of a Russian air defense system. President Tayyip Erdogan says the U.S. needs to find middle ground to end the dispute. He says Turkey bought the S-400 missile to guarantee peace and its national security. The first shipment of S-400 parts arrived in Turkey on Friday. The U.S. has threatened to expel Ankara from the F-35 program over the purchase of the Russian missile system. 
Washington argues the S-400 is incompatible with NATO's defense network and could compromise the F-35. Well, Turkey is also commemorating the third anniversary of the 2016 coup attempt, with over 15,000 events planned around the country. Ankara says what it calls the terrorist organization Fethullah was behind the attempt, which left 251 people dead. On July 15, 2016, a military faction launched a coordinated operation to topple the government. They attempted to seize key installations in all major cities, including Ankara and Istanbul. President Tayyip Erdogan was detained in his home. He broadcast a video message on social media calling on the nation to rise against the coup. As news spread, citizens left their homes and offices to stop soldiers armed with automatic weapons and tanks. Three years later, families are still grieving their lost loved ones. Now, Qatar has opened its newest and largest Coast Guard base on its east coast. The move comes amid increasing tensions between Iran and the United States in the strategic waters of the Gulf. The base is spread over 640,000 square meters and was inaugurated by Prime Minister Sheikh Abdullah bin Nasser bin Khalifa Al Thani. Interior Ministry officials say the new port will provide protection to the nation's strategic offshore assets, such as oil and gas facilities. Qatar is home to Washington's largest Middle East military base. Ten rebels, meanwhile, have been killed in Russian airstrikes on Syria's northwest Hama province. Monitor said Russian warplanes targeted rebel positions in the villages of Al-Zakat and Talmele in the north of the province. They said over 2,000 government soldiers and rebel fighters have been killed in intense fighting in Idlib and Hama since April 30th. Well, a protester has been shot dead by Sudanese troops during renewed protests near Khartoum. The killing took place during demonstrations against the delayed signing of a power-sharing deal between the civilian opposition and military. The opposition boycotted the scheduled signing of the agreement on Saturday because of outstanding differences with the ruling military council. The civilian opposition said a deal must first be reached on a constitutional declaration to determine the powers of the ruling council. The Transitional Military Council and Opposition Alliance agreed on a power-sharing deal on July the 5th. Meanwhile, nine people have been killed after their light aircraft crashed in northern Sweden. Authorities say the plane was being used for a skydiving trip and there are no survivors. What caused the accident is still unknown. Well, here in Pakistan, 22 people have been swept to death by flash floods in the Neelam Valley. A district commissioner says floods and landslides generated by a monsoon storm also destroyed 150 homes in that area. Witnesses say lightning struck two houses and a mosque during the cloudburst. During the storm, five passengers were killed and six others were injured when their jeep plunged into the river Neelam. Officials say rescue operations are still underway. Twelve people, including 11 soldiers, have been killed after a building collapsed in heavy rains in northern India. The Himachal Pradesh state government said seven more people are feared trapped under the rubble. Rescue officials said 17 soldiers and 11 civilians have been rescued. Remaining on topic, monsoon storms and flooding have claimed the lives of 102 people across South Asia over the last four days. Nepal has been the worst hit, with flash floods and landslides killing 60 people and injuring 30 others. In northeastern India, officials say at least 14 people have died and over a million people have been affected by the flooding. In Bangladesh, 12 people, most of them farmers, have been killed by lightning. In China, 17 people have died in rainstorms sweeping that country.
I'll be back after the break with more news. Stay tuned. We begin this segment with India, which its second ever mission of that country to the moon has been postponed because of a technical snag. The Indian Space Research Organization said the launch of Chandrayaan-2 was called off an hour before its launch because of safety concerns. India conducted its first lunar mission, Chandrayaan-1, nearly 11 years ago. China, meanwhile, is currently battling to save itself from a rising tide of trash. Shanghai alone produces 26,000 tons every day. The city has launched an ambitious recycling program, but there are complications. China is home to 1.4 billion consumers, many of whom are gaining purchasing power. While this may be an economic success, it is also swamping the country in garbage. The issue is straining municipal services nationwide. We really needed a really big push, and I think the government really realized that, and there's really a sense of urgency uh, to this. On the 1st of July, Shanghai launched China's most ambitious waste recycling and processing program. But there is confusion over rules as well as fines for infractions. Of course, it is a bit of a hassle. Sorting waste is a bit inconvenient. For example, when I'm dining at home, the napkin you wipe your mouth with belongs with dry waste. I used just put it mix in one bag with leftover bones. That was okay. Now you have to separate them. Last week, a woman was arrested for assaulting a volunteer over trash disposal related disputes. Despite this, many citizens are standing by the government initiative. China produced only 30 million tons of waste in 1980, compared to 210 million in 2017. The World Bank estimates that the country could produce as much as 500 million tons by 2030. Meanwhile, the first case of Ebola has been found in the city of Goma in eastern Congo. The health ministry has warned the virus can spread quickly in the densely populated areas close to the Rwandan border. It says a patient was diagnosed with a deadly virus in the eastern city of Goma after he interacted with Ebola patients in an area near Rwanda. The patient has been isolated to prevent the virus from spreading. Goma has been preparing to tackle Ebola for a year by setting up hand-washing stations and keeping public places clean. In West Africa, Ebola killed more than 11,000 people in an outbreak that lasted between 2013 and 2016. Germany has called for the formation of an EU coalition to, of the willing to take in migrants rescued from the Mediterranean. In an interview, Foreign Minister Heiko Maas asked core EU states to agree on a scheme without waiting for the bloc's approval. Moss proposed a binding quota system for nations prepared to accept refugees. Later this week, EU justice and interior ministers will hold talks on the worsening migrant crisis. Dog lovers in Brazil are training their faithful friends to become medical assistance dogs, helping doctors and patients in local hospitals and clinics. Child patients, the elderly, and people with depression are especially fond of the furry bedside helpers. This lovable golden retriever is Juca. Three years ago, this dog passed a series of tests which qualified her to work in medical institutions. Today, she has a fan following of patients and elderly people who wait for her to visit them every week. The assessment of medical assistant dogs consists of a series of tests. For example, they should not be frightened by noise and they must be docile and react well to any behavior of the patient, including being suddenly grabbed by them. All the necessary precautions are taken before a dog is allowed into medical settings. Owners are required to thoroughly clean medical assistance dogs before they can enter a hospital. That's apart from the disinfecting of the animals, which they're required to go through upon reaching a medical facility. Children respond to them particularly well. 
We work with medical and nursing teams to see which children are eligible to participate. The selected children can get out of bed and increase their interaction with people around them and participate in the assistant dog activities once a week. During activities, children can also play the role of doctors and use medical props. The kids can be seen forgetting their own illnesses as they engage with their furry friends. Only one in 10 dogs qualifies for medical assistance duty. China has reported its slowest quarterly growth in 27 years. GDP growth slowed to 6.2 percent in the second quarter, reflecting the impact of the trade war with the U.S. The world's second largest economy grew 6.3 percent in the first half of the year, in line with economists' expectations. The Statistics Bureau says China's economy faces a complex situation with increasing external uncertainties. The country's stuttering rate of expansion has raised worries about the potential knock-on effects for the global economy. Well, most Asian stock markets have gained ground after investors drew confidence from China's economic growth numbers. Mainland Chinese shares rose after data showed China's GDP growth slipped in the second quarter but stayed within market expectations. Japan's Nikkei 225 and Hong Kong's Hang Seng indices also enjoyed modest rises. Australian shares slipped half a percent, while South Korea's Kospi was mostly flat. In Europe, London's FTSE 100 rose after seven sessions in the red. Reacting to the Chinese data, oil prices fell marginally in Asian trading. Time to find out what the weather is like around the world. And with that, you're all caught up. Thanks very much for watching this bulletin here at Indus News.